Hello everyone. I am making this tutorial in response to a recent post on the Brandonio Productions channel where a user wanted to know if we could take Brandon's implementation of a 30-day trial application and re-implement it in, in C Sharp. Um, that's going to be what I'm going to do later on um, but before I get into that what I'm going to do is modify Brandon's implementation to make it a little bit more efficient and elegant um, and I'm also going to discuss a couple of the caveats with this type of implementation whether it be in C Sharp or VB.net so what do I mean by caveats well the first caveat is that since we are using my.settings to store our values um, we're using user settings and they are stored on the users profile so they're not machine specific we have another type of setting which is called the application setting but unfortunately this setting cannot be modified during runtime and can only be modified either by the project um, itself or uh, by modifying the XML file that's associated with the application and then rerunning the uh, program. The other caveat is that since these are stored in XML files they are also in clear text so if the user knows where to look for them um, they can change these settings and basically extend their 30-day trial period for as long as they so desire. Um, they can also change the uh, clock settings in order to sort of circumvent it as well. <clears throat> now there are other methods that can be used to make this more secure um, such as using encryption but we will not be going over those types of implementations today. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and run Brandon's implementation so that I can show you the file that I was referring to earlier. And here if you look you can see that the settings are in clear text and we can modify them at whim or at will and uh, extend our period for as long as we so desire those settings are stored in the user profile as I pointed out in the app data folder local the company name um, since this is a default assembly it's automatically uh, created as a Microsoft assembly the assembly name or the process name in this case since I ran it under the Visual Studio host process um, and then the assembly version so let me go ahead and delete this file I don't really need it um, and it will just be recreated when I rerun the application again later on so now let's go ahead and look at this implementation and see if we can make it a little bit more efficient well one thing we can do automatically is by recognizing that we're using three string values to store an obvious date time value we can just go ahead and change that right now to use a date time value this makes more sense because um, when working with dates it's it's better to do that and more efficient rather than storing uh, string values the other thing I'm going to need to do is change my settings because I'm going to also use a date time value here as opposed to a string. So now I have my trial time date and I will store that here in my trial time setting. I'm also going to change this since we are working with the boolean value it returns true or false so we don't need to explicitly check against true or false just using the not operator since it's going to return false on the first run I can easily change it to to a true value so that it will work within this block of code anytime this value or the checked value is false. Anytime the checked value is true, the not operator will change it to a false and it will then go into this block of code. Now I'm going to go on ahead and just comment out Brandon's original code down here so that we can compare it and go on ahead and re-implement it using my date time variable.
which to that I'm going to add a new time span of 31 days now I'm not completely done with this because I've still got to compare it to something which is why you see the uh, squiggly line underneath it indicating an error but first of all I'm not actually adding time to the original setting so I'm not changing the setting I'm just temporarily adding time to it for comparison reasons um, the other thing is you're probably really scratching your head why am I adding 31 days to it when we want to make a 30 day trial period program well the reason being is because in computer languages everything starts at zero for your counting so today if we were to run this today would be day zero you add 30 days to that you end up with 31 so on the 30th day instead of the program actually expiring on that day it expires the day after so what we're going to compare it to is our date time now so now looking at that if our trial time plus 30 31 days or 30 days is greater than our date time as it stands now then we are still within our trial period <clears throat> otherwise we're going to be outside of our trial period now I'm gonna add a message box up here so that we can see our first run and now I'm going to run the application so here we see first run so let's go ahead and look at our file real quick and we see here's our date time value so if we go on ahead and run it again we'll see that our trial is active and if we just change our clock to 30 days in advance we see our trials active which is what we want but on the 31st day our trial expires so that's what we're looking for we're looking for a true 30 day trial period and then just to show you how easy it is to extend that I'll go ahead and just change the month I don't really care about the day and I'll rerun my 30-day trial and see it's an active trial again so that just shows how there's a caveat with this implementation um, giving the user the ability to actually modify their XML file um, also since it is an XML file and we basically created on the first run anyway uh, they could simply delete the file um, in order to extend their trial period as well so let me go ahead and change my date time settings back to today's date and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually re-implement this in uh, C sharp which is the primary reason why we're here so I've already got a uh, project started in C sharp <coughs> you'll notice I've got some using statements here that I really don't need
and then I'm adding a reference to the properties so that I can have access to that when we set our settings later on. So now let's go ahead and get our form load method. And let's set our trial time variable. And now let's go ahead and set our settings. So now that we've got our settings in place, we can go ahead start doing our code. So the first thing as in the VB.NET implementation is we're going to check to see if our settings have been set previously. And once again I'm using the not operator so that I can return the opposite value because it's by default set as false. So if those are set as false then I'm going to go on ahead and set my settings and then I add in this other out uh, this other line here to save those settings unlike VB and C sharp you actually have to save your settings um, in in the code whereas in VB VB actually uses um, the assembly file in order to actively save your settings when you close your application As before, I'm going to add in a message box to show the first run of the application. So now let's go ahead and build our else statement. First, let me correct this error. So, as before with our implementation, since we're using a date time value, we can pretty much use the exact same type of code that we used before. If to it again we're going to add a time span. of 31 days. And then just as before we're going to compare it to our date time now. So if it is greater than our date time now we know that we are within our trial period. else we are outside of our trial period so now we re-implement the exact same program using C sharp let's go ahead and run it our first time there's our first run so now let's run it again to see that our trial is active 
and once again if we change our date time to 31 days ahead our trial expires so there you have it if you have any questions or comments please feel free to uh, leave them on the channel in the video um, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial